Okay, today we're going to be doing the spark plug change on this three and a half liter V6 uh, Dodge. It's a 08 Magnum. Um, let's see right here. It's uh, pretty nice. So as you can see here, you can see the spark plug tube right here. Here's the coil pack. One, two, and there's one behind it. Um, but the other side's all covered up. So we need to take off this intake right here. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect all these, this, going to disconnect this right here, and we're going to pull out these hoses right here and right here, and we'll go to that point and see oh, what else there is that we need to disconnect. And then there's, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on the top of the intake. So we need to do that, but first things first, since we're disconnecting electrical stuff, we need to disconnect the negative of the battery. Now the battery's in the trunk, but you can disconnect it here. So we'll disconnect it here and then disconnect what we can see and then go from there. From what I read online, you just take this intake, you do these three first, move the intake around, and then do the other three. That's what I've been told. So we'll disconnect the electrical and go from there. Okay, so this was a 10 millimeter um, bolt, so I just use a 10 millimeter deep well socket. And it looks like also you have to disconnect these. These also look like tens. There's one right here, one right here. So apologize for the glare, but so, and that's what I can see so far. I've obviously never done this on this vehicle, but I have done lots of spark plugs. I actually changed the timing belt in this. Pretty common for these water pumps to leak. The water pump was leaking and you could see it on the bottom of the oil pan one day when I was changing the oil. So I ended up doing a timing belt, a water pump and all the bearings in there as well. That was a pretty, that wasn't too bad of a job. So, and let me show you how to do these clips right here. You don't want to pull them. You don't want to pull on the wire. You want to just you want to push the red piece this way behind you, behind the clip, and then it should just pull out. You might have to push down this button, which you probably do. Um, push down this button right here. Um, we'll go from there. Okay, so on this clip, I actually tried to undo it with a screwdriver and it broke. So what I had to do is I had to go around the back side down over here and push out on the red clip and it came out and then I had what I had to do was push this little button right here, push it in, pull it out. And what sometimes I like to use, sometimes if the clips get really stuck, her needle on those pliers. And you pull on the clip, not the wires. You have to be kind of careful. So you definitely can use a pair of needle nose pliers to do electrical clips. Um, I like to do that because sometimes they get pretty stuck and you can't undo them with your hands. So, and there's that one. So, so, so far I've used screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and a 10 millimeter uh, socketer wrench. Okay, so what I did is I took out the, the rubber section of intake, sitting right there, just a screwdriver undo the clamps and I used let's see if I can see you can see this here I used two a 10 millimeter bolt long um, deep wall socket because of the stud and also down here there's one more down here now I don't want to take apart the whole intake because then I'll have to buy a new gasket and I'm trying to avoid that um, the dealers told me that no extra parts besides spark plugs need to be used to do this job, at least when they do it. So, as you can see, I've taken off the two hoses. The two hoses are off, right there. And they're just rubber hoses. One goes to the brake mast, the brake booster, and one probably recirculation of some sort. So, um, what I'll do now is I'll undo the top bolts on the intake. And those look like they might be as well and they are 10 millimeter so go to that point 
Okay, so now gotten these two nuts off. I showed you right here, right there. They're 10 millimeters. And you're never gonna get to this one without a wrench. I love my gear wrenches. This one's a 10 millimeter and it's reversible and it's angled. So I got these and these are my favorite set. So if I had to get one set, this would probably be it. Um, you can flip it back and forth with the flick of the flick of the finger. Um, so it's still not moving. Well, it's moving a little bit. You can see it's in here, it's loose. Um, so I figured out that I probably need to undo this bolt way down here, right there, to un hold this bracket on because of these studs. So I'll get that out of here. Um, that also gear wrench would be great for this. I actually use gear wrenches probably equally with sockets, pretty equal um, compared to sockets. So we'll do that. All right, so I got this bracket loose now and there was actually two bolts, one right there and then there's one. So I took the left side off this, so there's this bracket kind of expands like this and there's one bolt over here and one bolt over here and they're both 15 millimeter. So what I used, a variety of gear wrenches. I actually ended up using my flex head one. These are okay, not my favorite set, but sometimes when I can't get it, this one, the angle was just weird with the bracket. See the bracket has these, these right here that stick back. So you can't get that in there. So anyway, so that's where we are and the intake should pretty much come or at least move sufficiently to get the, to move it over to get those plugs. Okay, so what I had to do is I had to undo these brackets right here. I just loosened them. I let the I left the bolt in because it's just way down in there underneath the valve cover. Um, I just loosened them. They came. They flap down. This one right here holds the dipstick on. See it right there, right in the middle of the screen. Um, I had to use an open end wrench to get that one. I couldn't get a box on it to undo it or a gear wrench because of the other bracket that holds the alternator in. I'm not willing to undo the alternator for that. Um, so I just used a box end wrench and uh, just loosened it, oh, probably three or four turns. And then it was loose enough where this just, you know, this is just flapping around in here. See that? which is fine. Um, then I had to take out this piece. This dealer use only, this is for the transmission now. The transmission doesn't need to be serviced under normal circumstances until 120,000 miles. So at least that's what the owner's manual says. So this one has 91,000, so not even close. And you have to buy a special dipstick. It's like $80 for a freaking dipstick to measure that. Or you can use a long, long, long zip tie um, and then measure it but you also have to have the correct temperature so my advice on that part would be to take it to the dealer and have them do it um, make sure because they can make sure it's right these transmissions are made by mercedes are very very sensitive to the fluid level so anyway this thing should move out of our way now see that and it does just like that and I can get to those three spark plugs right there. So I'll show you how to change um, how I do spark plugs. There's lots of, should be good ways and should be bad ways. I'm gonna show you a good way that I've learned. So um, we'll go from there. All right, so I got the first plug out. And when I took it out, I'll show you this. That's what it looks like. Looks great. Um, no signs of coolant, burning coolant, burning oil. Um, they look good. It's just time for change. And if people do this, uh, um, typically you'll raise your gas mileage because it does drop over time um, with plugs, you know, like this. They're, um, I always replace with OEM. Always, always, always with, with um, spark plugs. I don't want to take the chance. I had to remove the intake do a little bit more work um, so I got the exact same plugs and you can tell that I did because they're the exact same number so 
exact same number. So if you pause the video, you can see that I have exactly the same number on those. Um, so I did not get these from the dealer. Um, uh, these from a reputable local parts store and they always have good parts and so I asked for OEM and this is what they gave me and it's exactly the right one. So what I like to do, there was a ton of dielectric grease on the tip. I just used some of that on the tip right there on this end, on that end. And then what I like to do is I like to put in my socket, put in my socket like that. And then I use anti-seize on the far end of the threads closest to the electrode and that's what I do and then I stick it in now with these some have a gasket and some don't and this one does have a crush washer at the end of it you it, typically it takes about three quarters of a turn to flatten that and then you get it tight so you don't want to just get it till you get resistance and then you're done you want to actually crank down a little bit and not too too tight until that crush washer crushes and then it seals. So other Dodge Chrysler products sometimes do not have a gasket, this one does. Um, so you wanna make sure you get a good seal. Okay, so I have, so I have four of them done now. I have these three over here done and I just have these two left. So now what I'm gonna do, I had to turn the intake like this. Now it's not gonna, it's not wanting to come out of the car because of the transmission dipstick, and I'll show you that here. So if we just take this, you can see it right there. That big pipe sticking right up in the middle. That is the transmission dipstick, and I was able to do it without removing that. Um, yeah, I had to move it up and down and all around and. Um, the back one was a little bit hard to get in to get that spark plug out, but it wasn't too bad. So now since I'm all done and I can get those two, so cylinder number five and six, I can get those um, with the intake on. So I'm going to go ahead and put the intake on, tighten everything up, put the connectors all back, and then do those last two. And then also I'm going to do an oil change on this today. It's due as well. And so the 90,000 mile service is done because um, I did the time belt water pump about 70,000 miles. These water pumps are not great. I put a Gates lifetime water pump in it and they've never had one returned the place where I got them and they sell a ton of them. Um, all they do is Gates. So um, I really liked it. It wasn't a bad job. So I did an accurate TL the other day and that was an eight hour job for me at least. But then I did a whole bunch of other stuff besides besides just the time belt and water pump. So, um, so yeah, we'll put this back together and I'll show you. Um, oh yeah, I did find two more hoses back here. Um, one is right here, and then that metal hose that's a gas recirculation that will need to be put back in this flange right here. Uh, so I need to make sure I get those two or else I'm gonna have an exhaust leak and then it won't and it'll throw a check engine light and it won't pass inspection. And so you need to make sure that you get that one for sure. All these hoses will throw a check engine light if you don't put them back and in the right spot. But it shouldn't be a problem since these two are different sizes right here. This one is further back, so it should be it shouldn't be a problem. So I'll put that all back together and it's just the reverse of how I took it off. So another couple things I forgot to mention. I did have to undo this connector right here. I'm not really familiar with Dodge since I mostly do Hondas and Toyotas. I don't know what this is. Um, obviously it's important so it wouldn't be there. So I did have to undo this one. Same as all the rest, you gotta pu pull that red, this red piece back and then clamp it push in and then push out and then pull out um, and then I also had to undo this one too this one I believe is the mass is probably the mass airflow is what I'm thinking it's probably is um, and also usually I like to change the PCB valve I believe that's it um, some of these dodges have an oil breather tube some don't so don't get confused between the oil breather tube and the PCV. They look very similar. The oil breather tube, just a breather tube. The PCV actually has a valve in it. 
So, and they look very similar. So you want to make sure you get the PCV valve. It's a good time to do this, 90,000 miles, a few bucks, and make sure you get in good emissions and all that. So, uh, pretty much, it's going back together. It's all in the right spot here, all lined up. And these were not tight. These bolts right here, they were not tight. You don't you don't need to crank on those. Um, I think torque should be about 50 or 50 to 80 inch pounds is all it needs to be. So very very light. I've done so many intakes and stuff that I pretty much have you know an okay feel for how tight it should be. I don't have an inch pound wrench today, so I'm gonna just not do those up tight but I'm gonna make sure it's not leaking and there's oil down in there so the o-rings it's just a whole bunch of o-rings in the bottom of this and those should seal okay so now we got all these hoses back in I found that I started putting the bolts back in for this bracket and the other brackets and I found that the exhaust recirculation all the way in the back was not going in you got to kind of play with it lift this end up a little bit and just slip it in. If it doesn't go in, then the gasket's not right. The gasket has to be, is very, very soft, has to be exactly around the flange. And then it went right in. So it just kind of, you just kind of have to play with it and get it in and then all the rest of the hoses just go on. So now we're ready to bolt this thing down. Okay, so these bolts, once again, are not tight and they're going into aluminum. You want to start them with your fingers. See how I can turn this with my fingers and it's going in and filling resistance, it's going in. That's fine. Um, once you get them started, then go ahead and, you know, torque them to about, I don't know, about 65 foot pound, uh, inch pounds, sorry, not foot pounds, 65 inch pounds, probably somewhere around in there. I didn't look up the spec. Should be right around in there. So just to let you know where this is at. And then tighten everything back up. And for this bracket right here, I all the bolts are loose. You wanna put all the bolts in, you know, and not tighten them down once you get them all in, then go ahead and tighten it down. Um, something like this where it's pretty, you know, there's four bolts here, you wanna do that. You'll never get it back on if you don't. Okay, a couple of notes here. This is actually the oil breather tube I talked about. Hey dude. Hey. And I'm just filming, and this is the massive flow sensor right here. Not this, this is a throttle. So this right here is mass airflow. So we're gonna start it up, make sure everything runs okay. So I don't actually know where the PCV valve is. Okay, first start after an oil, um, spark plug change. Fires right up. No check engine lights, which means I didn't miss a connector. Looks good. We're going to let it warm up here a little bit. I'm going to change the oil out of it. So, thanks for following me.